All right, let's talk about stability. Root Hurwitz criterion. One of the well appreciated techniques to uh, characterize stability for classical control systems. And I will be general again. You can apply this technique to any block diagram configuration. You have input, output, general, this is the command that you would like to follow. First, find the uh, closed loop system, right? Closed loop system transfer function between the input and the output. When you simplify things, you are going to have a numerator, a polynomial, divided by the denominator, another polynomial. And this denominator will uh, tell you if the resulting closed loop system is stable or not. For stability, you want all of the poles, roots of the denominator, to be on the left half plane of the complex plane. All right, let's say you find your uh, closed up system and you get your denominator. What's next? You can first check necessary stability conditions. Um, necessary co stability conditions tell you three things. Number one, if the signs in this denominator are the same, then the system may be stable. For example, I am out of space, so I am writing it here. Let's say d of s is s to the power of 3, s to the power of 2, s and 1. All the signs are the same, so system may be stable. So we need to proceed further to, to really say if it is stable, right? Let's say you are designing a controller to an aircraft, then you are going to your bus and saying, well, I have this denominator, aircraft may be stable. Uh, it is kind of awkward. So we need to proceed further and need to tell more than maybe stability, but this is the necessary stability condition. Now, if the signs in D of S aren't the same, then the system is for sure unstable. For example, let's say you have minus here. So system is unstable. It is a good thing to check, right? If you are st trying to stabilize a system and you end up having terms with different signs, then you can say, well, yeah, system is unstable. I need to proceed with a different controller type. This was maybe, this was for sure unstable. All right, the third one, if there are missing powers of S, the system is not stable. Let me stop here, not stable. So let's say D of S is S to the power of three, no S to the power of two, no S, and let's say one. So two missing powers. If this is the case, this necessary stability condition, it doesn't say unstable. It is not stable, meaning that it can be unstable, yes, but it can be marginally stable. For marginal stability, if the signs of the remaining terms are the same, like in this example, plus, plus, two missing powers, then the system may be marginally stable. Again, we need to proceed further to analyze it. But if the signs of the you know, remaining terms are not the same, again, system is clearly unstable. All right. Now, we need to proceed further for maybe stability and maybe marginal stability. Or if you want to characterize how many poles you have on the right half plane, left half plane, then you may want to bring them back to the left half plane uh, by designing controllers. You can apply sufficient stability condition. So st sufficient stability condition is nothing but the application of the root Hurwitz criterion. I would like to demonstrate, I would like to teach root Hurwitz criterion in a simple example. Well, let's say you find the closed loop system and you end up having this denominator. S to the power of four, minus six S to the power of three, nine S to the power of two, four S minus 12. First of all, you need to create a table. The first two lines of this table will come 
from the coefficients of this denominator. The rest you are going to compute and I'm going to teach you how to compute. First of all, while creating the table, start from the highest power of this polynomial, then go all the way up to s to the power of 0. So for this example, this table has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 rows. If this is s to the power of 5, you need to add one more row and the story goes like this. Now, the reason I use two different colors here, the starting from here, you need to write its coefficient here, 1. Skip the second one, right here. Skip this one, right here. The remainings, you are going to write here and here. This is always the case, okay? So, uh, start, the highest one will go here, then the skip, it goes like this. Now, these two rows will come from your denominator. The rest, as I mentioned, you need to compute. All right, the computation of A1 is here. Basically, how we are computing this, let me change the color of my pen. You multiply this by this, 1 multiplied by 4, minus this multiplied by this, 9 multiplied by minus 6. Then put a minus sign outside this multiplication and divide it by minus 6. Now we are going to apply this to all other multiplications. So A1 in this case coming to, up to be 58 um, over 6. Now A2 Let me clean a little bit here, and we are not interested in A2. Now, multiply this by, anywhere you need, to, you need to perform multiplication that you have something missing, put zero. One multiplied by zero, minus this, minus six multiplied by minus 12, Put minus outside this multiplication, divide by, again, minus 6. You are going to get minus 12 for A2. Now, the story is the same. Now, in order to find B1, you are going to focus on this one. In other words, this multiplied by this minus this multiplied by that, minus 6a2, minus a1, 4, now divided by a1. You don't have b2, in fact you do have, it will be 0, put minus divided by a1, but now this multiplied by 0 will be 0, minus this multiplied by 0, 0, so it will be 0, that's why you don't have. In fact, all this will be full of zeros. Likewise here. Now finally, let me change my color. You To find C1, we are now focusing on the two rows above C1. So we are shifting this down, down, down. And the multiplication is the same. This multiplied by, sorry, this to find C1, yes, this multiplied by 0 minus B1 multiplied by A2, put minus outside this multiplication and divide it by B1, you are going to get minus 12. Now, after you do this in a relatively easy way, and by the way, one of the common mistakes is forgetting the minuses, okay? Um, looking at the first column, first column will tell you how many write-up plane poles you are going to have. But <clears throat> before doing that, you, I, I believe you got the story, right? To find this, multiply, multiply, 
divide by this to find this, multiply, multiply, divide by this, then proceed down, 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 and repeat the same iteration process several times until you are done. All right, now, after painfully doing this, actually it's not really painful, you are going to focus on the first column. The sign changes here. Sign changes in the first column will tell you how many right of plane poles you have. Let's look at in this example. From 1 to minus 6, there is one sign change. From minus 6 to A1, which is a positive number, another sign change. From A1 to B1, there is another sign change. From B1 to C1, minus minus, no sign change. So you have three sign changes, meaning that you have three right half plane poles. How many left half plane poles you have? This is fourth order, basically, if you set it to zero and find the roots, close loop poles, you are going to have four of them. Then four minus three, one, you have left half plane poles. So system is unstable. Actually, in this example, to determine unstability, you can apply the necessary stability condition if the signs of B of S aren't the same, then the system is unstable. And, um, but it is also good to find the actual number of basically poles because uh, it will be, you know, important um, to know later for control design. Now, I would like to do one more example. Let's say you have your gain K. You have one s to the power of 2, s minus 3, close the loop, and let's say I am asking you find the range of k for closed loop Stability. All right, so in this example, we are going to apply root Hurwitz criteria, and this is the proportional controller, uh, nothing fancy, but let's see if we can stabilize it with a, a proportional controller. In this example, necessary stability conditions will tell us if it is possible to make system maybe stable, then we are going to proceed with the root Hurwitz criterion to determine the range. If uh, basically necessary stability condition tells us, well, you cannot stabilize a system with this controller, then we need to change the controller type. This is not about a video about control design, so I am proceeding with the root Hurwitz criterion. First, we need to find the closed loop system. I usually use here C of S, so the, and this is Y of S, so GCL of S will be in this case K divided by S to the power of 2, S minus 3 plus K. Looking at here, we are going to use necessary stability conditions first to see if it is possible to stabilize this system. The first term has positive sign, the second term has positive sign. Well, 
we must have minus 3 plus k greater than 0 or k greater than 3 such that this term, the last term, will also have a positive sign, then system may be stable with this proportional controller. So this is the requirement that we need to have. Perfect. So we may make the system stable with this controller type. I don't need to change the controller type to make the closed system stable. Now we need to determine for sure if the you know, system is stable. So let's do the root table. Our d of s is s to the power of 2 plus s plus minus 3 plus k. Highest power is s to the power of 2, s to the power of 1, s to the power of 0. In this case, it will be a simple uh, root table. Here we have 1. Skipping the second one, we have here minus 3 plus k. The remaining one is here. Here we need to find a1. a1 is nothing but this multiplied by 0. Let's put uh, 0. We, you know, all the missing terms here are 0. So minus sign 1 multiplied by 0 minus 1 multiplied by minus 3 plus k divided by 1. So you are going to get what? Minus 3 plus k. And you are going to get 0 here. 1 multiplied by 0, 1 multiplied by 0 divided by, you are going to get that. All right, now, in order not to have any pulse on the right half plane, we shouldn't have sign changes on the first column. We start with plus, plus, well, once you set k greater than 3, so this needs to be plus, plus. No sign changes, perfect. So for any value of gain k greater than 3, closed-up system will be stable.